This video is in response to someone who said they are not particularly handy with their car and they wanted to check the wires on their vehicle and I assume they mean the hatchback wires in reference to my previous video about changing the alternator. Uh, since you referred to as being not particularly handy, that's what I'll continue to refer to and work through this uh, more step by step than general reference. Uh, starting, we want to disconnect the battery uh, because playing with the wires on the hatchback can cause issues while the battery is still connected. And we'll start by releasing the tabs on the battery cover. Uh, depending on your vehicle, you might have more than one set. I have one left, it's not broken off from removing it repeatedly, but this one originally had two. Once you get there, you want to start by removing the negative or as it will show a minus sign and that will uh, keep you safe from electrocuting yourself as is the negative is also the power flow that goes through the body of the vehicle unless you have one of those really expensive European models okay for not so handy I don't know if you're used to using tools or have any at all uh, of course the tools that fit the best are what's preferred uh, so you'd want to use an opening wrench that's, that fits snug on whatever it is uh, the nut you're pulling off this is not a factory setup but this is and so it's a different size than this size would be over here uh, for this model I just release this side here And then, with a little bit of play, if it's clean, it should just come right off, just like that. Uh, once that's off, you always remove the negative first again. Then you can play with the positive. That, that way, when you're touching the frame of the car and the positive at the same time, you're not getting electrocuted. There is a chance of that happening, uh, because that will no longer be hooked up to the system you shouldn't have any problems now you don't have to remove the positive as well but most people recommend it once you've got the negative off then you just use the proper size fit in there if you're desperate you can try a crescent wrench this one's obviously way too big anyway you want to get a small one for that or if you're extremely uh, lacking in tools you can use some kind of pliers with slip jaws but you're more likely to strip the bolts, the nuts, and anything you try and use it on. And then you'll have a problem trying to get them to go back on or to ever get them back off again. And then see, once you get it loose enough, then it should wiggle free. If you can't get it loose, then you take a Sorry, I guess I'll have to edit some of this back together. Uh, anyway, if you can't get that post loose, even if you loosen the nut, then you take a screwdriver with a flat edge, rusty and corroded, this one apparently, uh, and then gently wedge it between the gap and the opening like this one to expand those, but really gently until the head wiggles where you can get it off. And then if it's loose but it still won't come up, then you can take the screwdriver and very gently give yourself some leverage on one side and wiggle it back and forth. Like that. And then once you've got them off, make sure both connections are put aside where they won't just move themselves back on somehow okay going to the back of the vehicle okay up here in the back is where the cables transfer transfer from the uh, body of the car out to the gate itself the hatch gate
this is where you'll start inspecting the hatch wires. Okay, and this is where you bring your screwdriver back into this again. And these are, these rubber covers can be easily torn, kind of delicate, so you just gently want to nudge underneath them and around them so you can pull them off with your finger gently push it down off the side and you want to do this with one side or the other just gently relieve that up so you can get it off with your fingers And then you'll have your wiring inside. Now you might notice on mine, I've already gone through it, you might have seen in the other video. My wires were frayed and exposed. So that's generally what you're looking for is, you know, to see the copper wire underneath the plastic cover. If you can see the copper wire under these plastic covers at all, that's what you're looking for and you want to uh, somehow cover that copper up again or repair it that wire itself and you can either uh, replace the entire harness in there which is kind of a project because it I'm not sure depending on the model how long it is it could run the full length of the vehicle and you might end up tearing apart half your interior to get it replaced and it might cost you a couple hundred dollars to replace that entire harness. Um, the common fix is because of that is to take this harness and cut it where it's exposed and then put in a crimp connection in between each wire uh, that, is, that is cracked and exposed and that can also lead to other issues if it's not done properly. Um, mine, I haven't crimped connected them right now. Uh, I was in a hurry and I haven't honestly fixed it properly because uh, it takes time to get them done just right so they're not falling apart. Uh, because in an area like this where the hatch is open and closed, these wires are constantly moving back and forth and back and forth. And that's part of what makes them fall apart because they get brittle back here from the heat and the rain coming down through this travel area back here. Uh, so at the moment if you pull this cover down you'll see the uh, mine is wrapped with electrical tape and what I had to do was wrap each individual wire separately to keep them from contacting and arcing across to each other. Uh, but I pulled this lower panel open a little and removed this one here. Let's see these right here. I don't know if you have the same model, but these rotate and come out. And I pulled all these panels off to get access in here. And another access hole. Unscrew this tail lamp which by the way on mine 
It's an 05, it's all brittle and falling apart and easily broken. But you can remove that to have a little bit of hand space to if you're really careful there's some mounts in there that uh, restrain the wires and you got to be careful with them you can see maybe you can't see there's some wires the wires go up in through here and down and back to the bottom of the hatch for the wiper and these plate lights they also go to the third brake light and they carry just enough power and just the right way that they can really mess up your ECM and all that if they're arcing with each other uh, I'm going to try and set the camera down and show you how to put this boot back on and then I'll pick up some wires separately and show you how to reconnect them with crimp connectors and all that. So once you put this once it's time to put the boot back on, it's it's kind of frustrating. It takes a lot more effort to get it back on than it is to take it off. But with some patience and work you can Get it to go back on, and yes, it's very important it goes back on because you don't want to let the water get in there as much as possible. And this will help to keep it out a lot better than not having it on. It's kind of frustrating, but it's worth it once you finally get it on there. Okay, I removed some of these interior panels on the hatch, and uh, as you can see, you know, if it looks like this, the wire looks like this, it's all nicely cleanly wrapped and all that, it's probably not got an issue, probably nothing wrong with that part of the wiring. You can see, you know, the wiring splits in different directions and handles the wiper motor and the tail lamps and the hatch electric hatch on my model anyway uh, a couple of different things um, and for you not so handy persons if you've never taken off any of these panels before I'll just show you a bit about that, about that. Um, when you get into these pop panels you know, you'll take all the screws out first obviously and then once you get into these panels they have different types of clips that hold them in place. I don't know if you can see that one clearly. But they all operate generally the same. They go in and they wedge themselves real tight and hard to get out. And what you want to do is put your screwdriver in underneath the panel, between the panel and the body component that it's holding on to and find as you slide back and forth where it's holding on and gently nudge directly where that connection's at so it pulls almost all the force directly on that that uh, clip as, as much as possible and uh, continue to slide the screwdriver down to find the next point of contact where it appears to be held on and uh, I'll try and show you that here in just a second I'll put this piece back on and show you what I mean okay with this panel mostly removed I've got my screwdriver, you see how it's wobbling. Run my screwdriver across, pulling it back out, pulling it back in until I can't really move it out farther 
I'm going to pull on the panel a little bit and try and get an idea of where it's holding on. It's, it seems to be up in this area somewhere. So I'm going to bring that screwdriver up in that area. I'm going to try and get as close to that clip as possible. 